I think to, to understand our position in the situation which we were in in 88 was that we've never been able to do the work which we wanted to do. We've never been able to complete the work we wanted to complete. So uh, I, I have to be technical here and say that um, there were really three elements which went into, the, uh, into our wish to do this study. Um, wait, let me just see. You know, I've got diabetes and it makes me a little bit forgetful. Um, Take your time. Uh, so I have to sort of collect my thoughts. Whatever time you need. The, the, the first was, the first uh, was uh, um, our knowledge of the early literature of the subject. The second was the, our knowledge of the work of uh, Bridgman. Right. Uh, I, this is uh, an aspect which I've never been keen to reveal. I understand. Uh, because I thought that uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, I thought it would lead to further difficulties hmm. if we revealed that. So we revealed something which was plausible, mm -hmm. but it wasn't actually uh, the driving force of, the, of uh, uh, investigation. The, the energy aspect of it was not. The energy flow. The energy flow in the system. If you have the fusion of two deuterons, then um, the question is how does the energy which is released flow into the lattice? Yes. Uh, that is something which involves quantum electrodynamics. Yes. And quantum electrodynamics is a subject which, we, which is not well understood, mm -hmm. uh, including by ourselves, I must say. Okay. Uh, one, one knows that it is associated, that, that the topic is associated with quantum electrodynamics, but one doesn't know exactly how uh, 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 the quantum electrodynamics affects uh, the system. So that is the second point. So the first was how much of the other, and the third point was the, uh, uh, in connection with the really relating back to the, the, the literature of the subject was our, our knowledge of the behavior of uh, protons in the lattice. Now, of course, you see neutrons in the lattice under uh, an applied electric field, and. Uh, at the most rudimentary level, we wanted to complete that study. What we had done was to show that there is a large energy release when uh, deuterons are compressed into the metal lattice under an applied electric potential. We knew that, but we had the, the one thing we had not done was to study the influence of the applied electric field on that process. So we wanted to complete that, and that was basically our program up to September 1990. Okay. And it turned out that we didn't have the resources to do to complete that study. So in 88... Well, uh, up to that time, the resources were out of yours and Stan's pockets. Right. Out of the reach. It, uh, we, we could uh, estimate fairly clearly what we would need. We would need about $600,000 to complete that study. And that, at that point, you had spent 100000 of your We had spent 100000 Okay. So uh, we were happy to spend $100,000, but this was not nearly enough. As, as, as it is usually happens, so such as more expensive for mm -hmm. um, So we were not at all keen to release the information. Uh, to the outside world. But I said to Stan Pons in uh, 88, I said, we have to let the Department of Energy know what we're doing. Because if we were, were convinced, and we are convinced that this is a nuclear phenomenon. Um, and in order to do this, you either have to apply for a patent or pu 
called it, submit the, write a paper and submit this paper, and submit the paper to them, or whatever. And I said to Stan Holmes, I, mean, I think what you should do is to submit an application for finance. Okay. So this is the situation we were in. And and about when was that? That was the summer of 88. Summer of 88. Um, okay. Uh, we didn't know what, you know, how we would be placed. So uh, this uh, led to the uh, difficulties with you know, colleagues in uh, Brigham Young University. Right. Who, uh, I understand that they somehow got to be reviewers of this paper. They were uh, uh, the first reviewers of the paper. And I said to uh, Stan Holmes at the time, this is this group in Brigham Young University. Uh, which was the first we were aware that they were interested in this country. Well, it's unfortunate. So as the matters developed and uh, they wanted to release their information, they didn't really. I, I, I don't believe, I believe they didn't really have any information because they had not done the experiment under the correct conditions. Well, the way I see it now is the two groups were working on rather different types of experiments. One was mm. what you and Stan did, and the other was mm. muon catalyzed fusion. Yes. Um, yes, I think they were working on an electrochemical system. But in their system, as far as I could, uh, in the information which I had was they had, they were working on a system which contained 10% heavy water in light water. Well, in that system, you would have no heavy, well, no we, deuterium in the lattice at all to speak of one percent. We now know that the work of, of Stephen Jones is very different from the work of uh, Fleischmann and Hans. So, well, he was but looking, you didn't know it at the time. I well, he was looking for neutrons. Completely different work. Uh, the way I see it. Well, pointless actually. Okay, so. Uh, uh, I shouldn't say that, but I, I think that they, uh, Stephen Jones approached this very much from the point of view of a, uh, of a classical, a classical uh, uh, hot fusion scientist. Yes. He said that cold fusion, if there is such a thing as cold fusion, it has to be uh, like an aspect of hot fusion. There have to be neutrons. Okay. Well, if you believe that, then that's the way you'll go. So. So, uh, uh, it was clear that this was going to reach the public domain and we had to let the authorities in the University of Utah know what we were doing. I think it is, uh, there's more to it than that. I think that uh, uh, some of our uh, colleagues uh, were not as um, careful with the information as they should have been. Okay. Uh, in fact, I was stopped on the campus by someone who said, you know, you're, you're working on fusion. <laughs> that would have been rather odd because fusion at that time was only supposed to be uh, the realm of nuclear physicists, so. Well, that they would want, they, they say that the have that view that it was, but uh, I don't see that this is at all true. Yes. Uh, well, 16 years later now, we have a better perspective on it. Well, it wasn't true at the time. That's, I, that's right. That's right. Um,